Okay, hello everybody. I'm Greg and I want to I want to talk to you about a topic today that kind of builds on some other videos that I have. And I also did a, this, this video very similar to this last year, but it's it's 2023, we're ending 2023. We're going into 2024 and I want to talk to you about uh, Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs. And in my first video, this it was more geared towards high earners who work in the federal government. This one, I want to expand it to talk about just all, all employees that want to save and want to invest a whole lot more for retirement, more beyond the, the limits of the thrift savings plan. Now, this is one of the things I want to open with right now. Guys, this video is going to be not, this is not for entertainment, right? Those are, this is for education. This is to bring up some topics that, uh, that I think that are very valuable and also clarify some confusion. But this is the thing, this is not one of those videos you listen to passively in the background while you're doing something else and then go and move your money or take action or open accounts. Please, this is something that you really need to leave, uh, pay attention to. Take notes if you need to take notes, watch it over again to make sure that we're doing things properly and realistically also save you frustration in the end towards tax time so that you're not caught off guard or you know what's going on. So please, especially one of the things I'm gonna close with is What's going to happen come the new year? What's going to happen come tax time? And a few of the things that you have to pay attention to because they involve tax forms. So please, again, please make sure you're attentive to this video as we go forward, okay? Now, when you look at this chart, some of you, um, you might be familiar with this diagram. This island or this circle represents our thrift savings plan, okay? And this is not the main focus of what we have going on today, but I think it's important to understand in relation to other IRAs, Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs, how it works okay so just a real quick example uh, the reason why this is the biggest circle is because your 401k account the tsp is the one that holds the most amount of money you can dump in the most amount of money okay so for 2024 i've already said uh, i made another video that shows you the maximum amounts they've gone up right so my folks that are under 50 years old you can put up to twenty three thousand now yeah, 23,000 now. And then also for my folks that are 50 years old and older, you're in that catch up area, you can contribute up to 30,500. 30, so that's another video for another day, right? But the reason why I'm saying that is because in this account, it is one account, right? It's one island. But this thing right there, this is a wall that separates the island. And the reason why it's, it separates the island is because from your paycheck and my pay, you can certainly contribute to the Roth TSP, any one of us can do this, no matter how much money you earn. So even if you're Dr. Fauci, working for the federal government, making $500,000 a year, you can contribute from your pay to the Roth 401k or Roth TSP or the traditional TSP. It's really up to you, right? So most of you watch my other videos when I say, you can put some here, some there, all of your money here, all of your money here. Right, so I just want to make sure you guys know that that your money can flow straight in there. All right, but the main topic for today is these two accounts over here: a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. Now, even though these accounts are not related to your federal employment, right? There's not something the VA opens up for you or whatever federal agency you're working for. There, I, I'm making a video on this because there's a whole lot of confusion between a Roth IRA and the Roth TSP or a traditional IRA and the traditional TSP. So I wanna make sure I talk about that. Plus, they're also really good vehicles for you to save more money for retirement. If you're maxing out the amount of money that um, you're putting into the TSP, but you wanna save, you wanna invest more for retirement, right? Um, you can do that. Now, this is a little bit of, 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 of tax guidance here, okay? If you were, and this is not you, from, if you're watching this video, you're more than likely a federal employee, a VA employee, right? If you were an American, uh, just a normal American working in the job market right now, and maybe you work for a small company that does not have a 401k plan, right, a 401k, 403b plan, 457 plan, you have no real retirement vehicle to save for retirement. Those Americans can open up these accounts to save for retirement, okay? Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit later on on the maximum amount of money you can put in the account because it's a whole lot less than a 401k. But I, it's important to explain that, that those folks can do that and can contribute, right? So they can dump their money after paying their income taxes into the Roth IRA and it can grow tax-free, 
to the day they pull it out. They can also dump it from their paycheck into the traditional IRA. Now, again, those Americans, not you, those Americans, if they dumped money into a traditional IRA, they can take a tax deduction on that money. Why? The, tr the way the traditional IRA functions, very similar to a traditional TSP, is it defers taxes to later on in life when they actually pull the money out, okay? But this is the thing, right? The IRS wants to make sure that for those of us, now I'm going back to you, I'm talking about you, a federal employee or someone out there who has access to a 401k, you, because you already have this account and you already have means of getting a tax deduction through a traditional IRA, you can't also get the tax deductions from a traditional, I'm sorry, traditional 401k, you can't also get the deductions from a traditional IRA, right? You can't get both, right? It's too much of a good thing. But it is still a very important vehicle, and I'll talk to you about that here in a second when we really get into the heart of the, the backdoor Roth IRA strategy, okay? So what I wanna talk about is this. Um, so these accounts, the, for 2024, the maximums have gone up, okay? The amount of money that you can put into those accounts have gone up, and let me go ahead and get those for you. So for both of these accounts, right? Whether you're putting your money here or here, for 2024, the maximum has gone up to 7,000 for all working Americans. But if you are uh, 50 years old and older, right, you're one of those folks that qualify for the catch-up provision, you can add, add, add an additional $1,000 to that for $8,000 maximum, okay? Um, so that's what we're doing for last year. Now, um, just as a side note, and please, I'm not gonna go over that right now, maybe contact me offline. I'm shooting this in November of 2023. You have the rest of the year of 2023, all of until tax day of 2024, if you wanna make contributions in these accounts for 2023. So right now, if you never contribute to any of these accounts or you haven't maximized them yet, you have some time, but, but again, that's too much for one video. Reach out to me offline and um, we'll, we'll talk about it, okay? But I just wanna, I wanna show you that, okay? That the, these are the, the maximums. Now, another thing that you would wanna pay attention to right now is to understand your situation is that if you're single, we'll look at you. If you're single, uh, married filing jointly, we'll look at you too. How much money you make as a couple also determines what paths or what options you have. So let's talk about what those incomes those income ranges are, all right? Okay, so this is where we also uh, part ways, okay? So I want you to look right here. You know, this is the less than sign, right? Remember that from, from high school? So if you are a single person, right? Single filer for your taxes and you make less than 146,000 a year and now this is what is called Maggie, your modified adjusted gross income, right? So if your income from the year is less than 146,000, 46,000, right? You can actually make direct contributions from your pay to a Roth IRA, right? You can make contributions. You can dump in that 7,000 or 8,000 straight into a Roth IRA, okay? With, with no issues. You dump the cash in there. And like I'll tell you more towards the end, dump the cash, but don't leave it in cash. Cash doesn't take advantage of power of the account. We want to make sure we buy some type of investment so our money can grow, okay? Now, if, if uh, so if, this is a thing though, if you are a married filing jointly couple, if you make le less than 2,000, uh, 230,000, you also can do that, you and your spouse. Now they'll have, you have to, even though we're taking consideration that for you guys as a couple, you will not have, there is no such thing as a joint Roth IRA. You will happen to open a Roth IRA and then your spouse opens their both their own Roth IRA and each of you could dump in the seven or 8,000 depending on your age, okay? So I hope that's, now if you make more than this, okay? If you make more than that, this is, this is where, um, you know, you're a high earner, right? If you make more than this and you are a high earner, now I'm talking to you, okay? If you make more than $146,000 a year as a single filer, right? Or if you make more than $230,000 as a, as, a, as a couple, right? In your modified adjusted gross income, this option, you cannot make a direct contribution into a Roth IRA, okay? Now, you can make a contribution. It's more of a two-step process, but you just can't make a direct contribution, 
Okay. Now, guys, if you're wondering, well, why don't I just put the money in the traditional? Why do I have to do the Roth? We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. So now I'm talking to my high earners, my 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 folks that exceed these these income ranges in their modified adjusted gross income, right? If you want to, one of the things that you qualify for is what's called, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of different names. It's called a backdoor Roth IRA strategy. Um, the IRS calls it a doing a Roth conversion. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about that now. Now, why do we wanna do this, right? Why would we want to, because what's gonna happen is to get money here as a high earner, what we first have to do is dump our cash into a traditional IRA, okay? And when we dump it into a traditional IRA, we're gonna leave it cash. Don't buy any investments, okay? Once that money lands in our traditional IRA, the next day, the next business day, what we then do is what's called a Roth conversion. That same money, we now put it in the Roth IRA and it, and it lands there, it's final destination, okay? So this is called a Roth conversion, right? Now, does it make sense? Why does the IRS force you to do two-step process rather than to make you, look, I don't know why they do that, okay? But I'm just trying to show you how to get money into a Roth IRA. Now, why would you wanna go through the hassle of doing this? Well, this is the reason why, okay? It allows you, first of all, to save more money for retirement, invest more money for retirement, okay? But the reason why we put it here, now, there is no benefit for my high earners. If you are working in a job, I told you that has a 401k, and you put your money here, you don't qualify for the extra tax deduction. It's against the rules. So why would you put money there, invested there, and grow if you get no tax advantages, okay? That is why we want to move it there in cash the very next business day, move it into a Roth IRA. Because what happens is that money, you've got no tax deductions. So that's money is you have paid the income taxes on this cash, okay? But now in the Roth IRA, you get that cash you invest it, right? Whatever, what, in whatever you're comfortable with, whatever your you know, risk tolerance is, right? You could invest it in S&P 500 index, you can invest it in bonds, whatever, you know, that's a longer conversation for another day. But when the money goes here and you invest it and it grows and grows and compounds and compounds over the years and the decades, finally when you get to retirement, this money you get to pull out completely tax-free, okay? Completely tax-free. Um, but yeah, so when you're moving your money here to moving it to there, you, 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 can, you can do that, right? It's called the backdoor Roth IRA, okay? So again, please make sure you do that. Now, kind of just of a side note, if you do not already have these accounts open, let's say you're gonna open them, right, for my high earners, um, I do recommend you open them with the same um, investment company. Like, I'll give you an example. I, in other videos I've mentioned this, you can open up, usually open up these Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs with your banks. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, just because banks usually tend to have higher fees. They usually have uh, less availability to investment products, right? So again, I can't make a recommendation. What I tell people is my family's money, my family, my extended family's money, is usually, our, our, our accounts and Roth IRAs are usually in one of three, um, one of three investment companies, right? Vanguard, Schwab, or Fidelity, right? The, I call them the big three. So reason being is those are discount brokers. The, the fees they charge you on your money and in the investments are usually a whole lot lower. And then on top of that, the amount or the options you have for investing is a whole lot more broad, okay? So, so that, that's what I would tell people, but keep it. The reason why I recommend keeping those in the same account, it just makes it easier to do the transactions because it does take a few days, right? It takes one day for the money from transfer from either your pay or your checking account. That's actually the best way I recommend, right? So realistically, even though we can do this, right? Maybe, and this might, I don't hope this is not confusing you more, even more, right? You have your money going into your checking account or maybe you just have a really good balance in your checking account and you can just deposit it directly here, right? So, you know, again, um, most of us, our money's constantly flowing into our checking account because this is where we pay our bills and we pay, um, I'm sorry, we pay our bills and maybe we save a little bit of spending cash, maybe our emergency fund. But yeah, if you have that money cash, drop it in there, okay? So, so this is the thing. And again, I told you, this is not a passive video to listen to. The next two things I'm gonna go over are very important because they're talking about tax forms and whatnot, and I want you to pay attention, okay? 
so the next two things are what happens at the end of the year when you start receiving all these tax forms from your banks and you know from the TSP or you start receiving your W-2 from work and all that. You're gathering all these documents because you want to give them to your accountant or your tax preparer to start preparing your tax. These are two things you're going to have to pay attention to, okay? Okay, so if you make this Roth conversion, right, you move your money from the traditional to Roth, that for, for most companies will trigger them to create a tax form with you, okay? Now that tax form you're gonna receive is a 1099R. So let's say, oh, let's use you for example, let's say um, we opened our accounts with Schwab, just, just so we have consistency here, right? We opened it with Schwab, right? So at the end of the year, if I move the money from a traditional IRA account to a Roth, they're gonna cut me a 1099R. I'm gonna receive that from Schwab. The, 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 the tax, the, ta the, the form is gonna say that this person took a distribution from a IRA. Now, did you take a distribution? Meaning, did you take money out of the account and put it in your pocket or put it back in your checking account for you to spend? The answer is no. But the transaction just triggers that form, okay? You know what you did was move it from one account to another account and you technically don't have it in your hands to spend. You have it in another retirement account, okay? And that's okay, just I don't want you to freak out, okay? But when you go to file your taxes, Right? You're going you're gonna to give your accountant or your tax preparer this form. But I recommend one of two things. Also give them this form. You can print it out online. Now, the thing is, is right now we're in 2023. If you are to print this out for your, to file your taxes next year in 2024, you want to make sure you're getting the 2023 version of the 8606. I checked it today. It's November 8th today, um, 2023. Um, they still haven't uh, released that form yet. So again, maybe Google uh, tax form 8606 for 2023 by the time you're ready to do this, okay? Now, you could fill this out and give it to your tax preparer or uh, that's what you're paying them to do. Inform them I did a Roth conversion, right? I did not take this cash, unlike what this form is saying, right? I did not take the cash. I just moved it to a Roth IRA account. Therefore, um, please file this form with the IRS. Okay, so guys, and the reason why this is, some of you may not know this, even in retirement, when you start pulling money out of Roth accounts, even though Roth are tax, is tax-free money by that time, those people like the TSP or you know, Schwab in this case, they're still gonna cut you at 1099R to show that the money has come up, the money's moved out of a retirement account. Doesn't mean you have to pay taxes on it, right? Because it is Roth, but they will give you the form. You just need to get used to that, that um, don't get spooked by it because I know that might scare some people, all right? So again, these are the, these are the two things I recommend. Another thing I, I want to recommend, one of our physicians I was talking to, uh, he was filing his taxes this, this, this year for 2022, um, and he was in a panic because he got one of these forms, went to his, an account, went to his accountant, and the accountant is saying that he was going to um, pay taxes on it because now he took a distribution out of a traditional IRA. He was in a panic so much he called me on the phone and said, Greg, can you talk to my accountant? I said, yeah, no problem. I told his accountant that that's not what he did. He did not contribute to a traditional account. He did not then take it out cash to spend it. What he did was a Roth conversion. Now, that accountant was, uh, I don't want to just say fairly young, but fairly new to accounting. Um, I found out later that uh, this physician that I'm working with and that I'm, I'm, I'm advising, he... Uh, not advising. I'm, you know, I'm coaching him on these things. I'm kind of walking him through the process, but he was he, he was the highest earning client that she had as an accountant, and I advised him, you know, and I, that if you are the highest earning customer for this accountant, you need to find another accountant because that accountant might not be used to the transaction of Roth conversions and more higher level or higher or more complex uh, tax situations. So just, just as a side note. Now I did look up, um, I did look up online if you are doing Roth conversions and you, you, know, you have a simple situation, uh, whether you're single married and you have a very simple tax situation and you use TurboTax, TurboTax can do it. You know, there is a process you can Google it, uh, Google it for yourself, TurboTax Roth conversions or TurboTax backdoor Roth IRA. It, it, TurboTax is able to do it. So I just wanna make sure that we're, we're aware of that guys. And in closing, um, 
you know, I tell people all the time a, a, a few things. When the money finally lands in the Roth IRA, just like when your money lands in your, T, in your TSP, the power of these accounts, they make them so powerful so you can build money for retirement, is to get that money and invest it in a, in a vehicle that will grow and compound. Now, don't get me wrong, not everything is for everybody, right? You know, I, you might not be as aggressive as I am, I may not be as aggressive as you are in, in investing and in growth. So you, what I would just say is don't leave it in cash, right? Even if you are gonna leave it in cash, put it in some, and you want it safe and secure, look at some very conservative vehicle that still gives you some growth, makes your money, your cash keep up with inflation, um, at the very least, because that's the power of these accounts, they grow tax-free. All right, so guys, again, just to reiterate, because these are some very important points, um, the cutoff, that 146,000 for single filers, 230,000 for married uh, for couples. Again, if you make under that salary range, you can just make a direct contribution, right? And just like I did here, you can do it straight from your paycheck, or you could even dump it in straight into your account, right? So this, I'm actually in this situation I went since I went part-time, right? So I make under the threshold. So what I plan to do is just come January 2nd, right? The first business day of the new year, I'm just going to dump my cash straight into the Roth IRA, buy my invested, and I'm good for the whole year, okay? So you can do that. So just a few reminders of the salary threshold. If you're over these income salaries as single filer or, or as a couple, then just remember, you just have to move the money from your checking account or your pay into the traditional IRA. It takes about a day to settle there. Then from there, leave it in cash, move it to Roth IRA. Once it settles there, buy your investment, okay? The other thing I do wanna reiterate again is again, at the end of the year, once you do that conversion, you will receive a 1099R. We want to make sure we print out this 20, uh, 8606 form for the year of 2023 even though I told you it's not available yet, but by January, it should be available. We wanna print that out and give it to our accountant, okay? Talk to them about it. Guys, if this is overwhelming, uh, contact me off offline, a lot of you do. Um, I can walk you through, I've worked for like a few of our physicians last year, we literally click by click went through and did it together. And I, uh, we also set an alert for January so that we can remember to print out this form for our accountants. Um, but yeah, I hope this I hope this is, wasn't too confusing. Guys, once you get into the routine of doing this, it does become very routine every year and it's not as overwhelming. I do know when is when we deal with tax forms, um, it can be a little bit intimidating, but yeah. So that's what I'm saying though, if you're not confident in that, I do think it's worth it, right? To dump and save and invest as much money as possible for retirement. Um, but yeah, so I hope this is helpful. My name is Greg again, and if you do need any help, please reach me offline. I'm available on VA email or Microsoft Teams. Um, and again, guys, we could talk more about your situation. Like for example, even if you don't know what to buy, you know, you want, but you want something similar to the TSP C fund, S fund, F fund, or iPhone, whatever it is, you know, we could we could talk about that. I could show you a few things and give you some options so that you can make an educated decision. All right? Have a great day, guys. Bye.